My father had a farm in Okanagan Mission before the houses covered it all over. And uh, that is, for me, my home, even though it doesn't exist anymore. My name is Michael Irwin, and I'm 83. Most of my time I've spent in theaters. My time at university that mattered to me was the Players Club, and uh, I threw myself with a great deal of energy into the production of their plays, acting in them, building sets. I was spotted by a CBC producer at that time, a radio producer, and he invited me to come down and work on radio shows. Professionally speaking, it was a new world for me because I was dealing with people of all ages who had a lot of experience working on radio, and I was the new, new boy. My major concern about climate change uh, began about 10 years ago. Way back to James Lovelock, who is a British scientist, and he was asked about the business of climate change and the increasing carbon dioxide. And his simple response, which I bought into, was, well, all you have to do is bury a lot of carbon. And of course, immediately I realized that biochar makes carbon which you can bury. It spurred me on to become more into biochar which is making charcoal, it's not glamorous. It doesn't require a lot of money. It just requires a lot of sense. If we don't do anything, it's game over in about a decade. Now, why would I bother being interested in this? It dominates my life and has for the last 10 years as a concern. Climate change is such a nebulous concept for most people, doesn't touch them on a daily basis, that it's hard to get people to become serious about worrying about it. I just began um, campaigning politically. There was a small group of people who were concerned in Kelowna and we used to go down and march. Amazing, the change in the last year. The, the sheer awareness of the public. Uh, I'm very pleased about it, but I wonder if it isn't too late, that's all. If it was a war, we wouldn't have any problems. We would suspend all the demo democratic things in government, we would go into a protection mode, and we'd do it, which is what we did in the Second World War. I've got to the point where I can see us as a race of creatures dying off. It doesn't include me, I'm going to die anyway. But I have grandchildren and I inwardly weep for them because I think it's going to get awful. And that's the prediction. Now, it's not saying that some kind of miracle can't happen, but I don't count on them. So, you know, there's a lot of turmoil to come yet, and um, I I'm feel hopeful because of the turmoil. I, th I think the old fogies like me <laughs> have to get out of the way. <laughs> Our habit is to look after ourselves in the present. Well, I'm sorry, the present isn't good enough anymore. You have to think about our effect on the future. And that is a hard thing for human beings to come to. But young people seem to understand it. Because after all, it's their future. 